Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So yesterday I did a video on this one wheel scooter company that makes a scooter that used to be repairable, that now not so much. Back in the day it was repairable and as time went on and they added more features and functionality and technology and made it smarter, now you have a BMS that when you unplug from the battery, which is gonna be one of those things that you do when you wanna maintain it safely, it bricks the board. So you have to send it back to the manufacturer for repair, you have no other option. And when companies come out that try to get around this so that you have the ability to repair what you own, what happens is that they, they enter litigation with them. They take them to court so that you can service your own property. Now, I get a lot of comments on this channel anytime I do a video on anything related to automotive or cars where people are very, very proud that they have a 1974 Pontiac Grand Prix. They're very, very proud to have a 1985 Ford F-150. And the reason for their pride is they say, my car doesn't have a computer in it and it never will. I will never drive something with a computer in it. And while I haven't gotten to that point yet, while I will drive a car that has a computer in it, I completely understand why you feel that way, and I completely understand why that is a priority to you. Because the more smart devices become, the more stupid they are in reality. The more technology you pack in there, it just kind of it often winds up being used uh, to limit the functionality of it or it becomes a liability or just another thing that can break. And who wants to deal with that? And one of the best examples I can imagine of this is one I want to point out to you is a microwave that thinks it is a steam oven because it got a software update over the air that made it think it was a steam, up, uh, steam oven. Now, you may be wondering, Lewis, why is a microwave getting getting an update? Why does a microwave connecting to Wi-Fi? Uh, let's read. So here it says, uh, this combo mic combi microwave is unusable after an oven update. It thinks it's an oven. Owners of a certain type of combi microwave from the German product AEG have a device that no longer works for over two weeks. Due to a wrong software update, the microwave thinks it is a steam oven. The problem can only be solved on location. A spokesperson confirms to NU.NL. We're going to talk about that. It already went wrong on March 2nd. An employee manually entered a wrong software number somewhere, uh, number somewhere, causing an incorrect update. As a result, all combi microwaves of this type no longer work in Benelux as a spokesperson for umbrella company Electrolux. This microwave oven thinks it is a steam oven. Due to a wrong software update, users get an error message when selecting a program, making the device unusable. Electrolux has been trying to resolve the issue remotely for two weeks, but has been unsuccessful. So they can update the device remotely, but they cannot re-update it remotely. The ovens can no longer connect to Wi-Fi due to the wrong software update, so a new update cannot be performed. So perhaps they have a piece of firmware on there now that is, that is used with a different Wi-Fi chipset or something or different drivers or whatever. I don't know how they screwed it up, but now it can't even connect to the Internet anymore, so they, they literally they, they bricked it to the point where it needs to be updated and fixed in person. We are currently in the process of informing our customers about this. We will call them to make an appointment so that service technicians can come by to perform the update on site. The appointment is, of course, free, says the spokesperson. That's mighty Christian. <laughs> but this is, in all seriousness, uh, there's, there's just many ways to come at this. The first is, why the fuck is a microwave connecting to Wi-Fi? Why? Why does your microwave need a software update? We perfected the microwave 30 fucking years ago. Now, if you want to come up with a more efficient piece of hardware design so that it takes less electricity, has a better light in the inside, you know, has a spinning mechanism that's less likely to break over the, over the years, that's all hardware stuff. But when we're talking about the software, what are you going to add to a microwave one or two or five years from now to make it better? And this is something you see with a lot of pieces of equipment nowadays, or you just games, anything else. A lot of companies will sell you half the product now and maybe one or two years from now it'll actually work right. And they'll say that it's always improving with over-the-air updates when in reality that often is code for, we're not really sure if this works yet, but we're going to allow it to connect. So if something screws up, we can fix it next year, but get your money now. One example recently was in December of 2021 when the heat pumps and a lot of Tesla Model 3s and Ys that were made in 2021 stopped working. And uh, there were people who theorized that there's a flap that gets stuck open, when it get frozen open, and when it gets frozen open, there's a sensor in there that will read a, the cold temperature from outside. And if it senses it's really cold outside, the heat pump will turn off because it'll think, oh my God, something must be broken. And when that happens, the, you, you won't have heat in your car. So if you, do, if you just do some sort of sensor bypass over there, then if you bypass that particular sensor, the heat pump will work again. They did that update over the air, which is great. You fix something using your own over the air update. That works in literally every other car on planet Earth when you buy it. Um, what is it in a microwave that you plan on updating or fixing? Again, what is a microwave? 
Like it's get, what are you going to make it spin faster or something? You're going to like, what are you going to do? Are you going to make it do a light show? I like, really, it, it's heat, timer, and maybe a clock that you that you set. I've I've never set the clock in my microwave in eleven years in my old apartment. I haven't set the clock in the microwave in my new apartment. It's just not one of the things that we do here. But but in all seriousness, why? What is the point? You know, I have a very very small list of devices in my apartment that I allow to connect to the internet in my apartment. I have a computer, I have a laptop that I connect to the internet every now and then, and I have my cell phone, which connects to the internet. That's it. My stove does not connect to the internet. My lights do not connect to the internet. My thermostat, my air conditioner does not connect to the internet. My television, I don't even have a television anymore, but when I did, it did not have the ability to connect to the internet. There is no need for these things to connect to the internet. I don't want my speakers that's connecting to the internet. I don't want any other microphones connecting to the internet. I, you know, it's bad enough that this thing does, but I did take the microphone out of it when I opened it, so I have to use a Bluetooth if I actually want to use it. I don't want my microwave attached to the internet. You can call me a Luddite. All right, that's fine. Secondly, why... It, did they not learn from devices that were made over 30 years ago? Do any of you who are 90s kids remember how, you know, like you, if you bought something at Toys R Us, there were all these different types of toys that had reset buttons on them. So there'd be a little thing that says reset and there'd be a little hole and you would take your tweezers or find a paper clip, stick it in there for 10 seconds, and then the v- device would reset itself to its factory settings, its factory firmware. And sometimes that would actually fix your problem. Again, we're not talking about some sort of 10 terabyte media server here. We're talking about a microwave. Why can't you have some sort of read-only chip that has the original working tested firmware that you can revert to? So it, if, if anything gets screwed up, you click the reset button, it takes the firmware from the read-only chip, and it copies it to whatever the chip it's, it's booting off of, and that's that. How hard would that have been? Again, this is, this is not something that's new. This is not something that's radical. This is something that's been being done for over 30 years. And particularly when you're talking about something like a microwave for a kitchen, there's really no excuse for this. Again, this is not like some sort of update to Windows or update to QuickBooks. It's, it's a microwave. This is not a device where you should be having these types of problems because we perfected the microwave over 30, damn it, 20 or 30 years ago. I think it's silly, and uh, I personally have no desire to purchase devices that have a computer in it unless the the upside to having this level of, of uh, complexity in it actually outweighs the potential downside of it someday not working because some jackass at some company made a typo and that means that my kitchen no longer works. I don't want to live in a world where I can't cook my food that evening because somebody made a typo while they were adjusting firmware at a company. And if we're going to live in that world, you need to sell me on what it is that I'm getting that I wouldn't otherwise be getting. And I don't think you could do that with a microwave. Maybe you can do it with, uh, I don't know, you know, smart home automation, maybe even an air conditioner. The idea, I can turn on my air conditioner from my phone so that I can set it up so that it's cool 20 minutes before I get home, that kind of stuff. But it's a microwave. I don't know, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but it's so ridiculous. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. And uh, bye now.